Hello everyone, we're going to be doing a setup for BusyBox and kind of a quick tutorial of how to use it. If you don't know what BusyBox is, BusyBox is kind of like a Swiss army knife, bunch of tools for embedded Linux. So it contains a bunch of stuff like Netcat, you can write little, it's got like a web server on it, you can use it to do port checks or connectivity checks for different hosts along the, your network or maybe trace route connections or and just kind of create like this little web server service that you can go to the website and have a couple different scripts running where you can do different inputs and get different outputs depending on what you want to use it for. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go sudo yum install busybox and it's not yum because I'm actually using it Ubuntu so it's going to be app get. And I'm going to go over, make sure that I'm in my home directory. We can make a directory. You can name it anything you want. www, web server, name it anything. In here we create a file called index.html and this is kind of like the main index configuration file for the web server server that we're going to host. index.html is the default file that BusyBox references. You can name it something else, but if you name it something else, then you have to specify it when you're using it. So let's just start with the default just to get our basics down. We get an index.html. We can create a quick HTML little script here, head, body, and we can do hello from BusyBox. And then we got to put that there. And then if I right click that, then now we can go ahead and launch the HTTPD web server. So we go BusyBox, HTTPD. If I hit enter right now, it's not going to work. And that's because we get a permission denied by bind. That's our DNS container that hooks onto our web server. Basically, it doesn't want us to be using it as our normal user. We got to be either sudo or a workaround is to just do it dash p and use a different port. See this command itself, you don't need to be a sudo user to use this command, but you do need to be sudo to be using the port 80. And and this is what it's using by default. So by doing dash P, we're specifying that we're not be using port 80, we're using 8080, so 8080. And now if we hit enter, we didn't get a permission denied. And if we check PS, EF, and we grep for HTTPD, we can see that here is our service that's running. And here is the process that we just spawned by running this process. So we can highlight this and just go kill that command. So let's go ahead and kill it. Oop, you name it. That's not what I got. So copy, paste. So now if we do that, then the only process we have running by the name of HTTPD is the process that we just spawned to write that. So that means HTTP is no longer running. Now if we type in BusyBox, BusyBox gives us a list of all the functions and tools that are in here. Some of these you might actually recognize. CH root, clear, chone, ch mod, cat, awk, ash, arp, arch, false, you know, we got dir name, egrep, echo, environment, factor, gzip, fgrep, sleep, sort, top, watch, wc, wget, tty, who, who am I? You know, these are all Linux commands. And those are pretty much all the binaries that BusyBox is designed to work with. And some of these might not be installed by default. So you might be wondering like, well, why are these listed? Because stuff like make directory and mdev and nuke and rpm, these kind of things, they're, they're always on a Linux machine when you install it, even with minimal installation. Well, sometimes we got things like containers, like Alpine minimal build containers that are super slim, or maybe you're running some kind of Android Linux operating system, or maybe you're running like a Cumulus router that doesn't have all these commands. But then when you install BusyBox, it all comes installed with that. So BusyBox is just to make sure that we got all the necessity Linux commands. <sighs> So anyways, let's go ahead and clear this out and let's create this uh, BusyBox server again. This time we're going to do what's a dash F. What this does is it brings the HTTPD port 8080 to the foreground. That's what the F stands for, which means foreground. That means we pretty much disabled this container or we've disabled this terminal. We can't type in here anymore because this terminal right now is dedicated to this server. And if I were to hit control C, kills the process. So we kind of have to have this running. But dash F is kind of useless on its own. The real value comes in when you do a dash V with a dash F. And V is verbose. It gives us real time monitoring of all the get requests that the APIs are shooting us from the website when users are interacting with it or even when it's just doing ping checks to stay up. 
So let's hit enter. And now as you can see, we're in the foreground, it's running. We got the verbose connection. And if I were to go to Firefox and do localhost 8080, we got our script here, hello from busybox. And if we go over here, we can see we got a 200 response and a 404 response. 404 means not found, but I can find it right now. So I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's a little bug messing around. So if I were to hit control C to exit out of here, and if I were to go back into Firefox and refresh, unable to connect because we just took that web server down by doing the control C. But now check this out. If we go to LS, we can see that we actually created index.html in our home directory and not in the web server. So that was actually my mistake in the video. We tried to do it here in the web server. And if I try to launch BusyBox from here, then it works. But when I go to refresh the page, I get a 404 not found. Why is that? We got the in index.html. Well, that's because this BusyBox command is launching from my current directory that I'm in right now. That means if I'm not in that directory, I got to specify the directory that it's in. So I got to do home oxymonster. And now if I were to go over to the web page, we got it spinning up. We got a 200 response. That looks good. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to move the index file into the web server. Looks good. So now what if we want to add some extra functionality to this web server? We can do that by adding in scripts. And the scripts here go into a directory called cgi.bin. And CGI stands for Controller Gateway Interface, I think. Let me confirm that. Common Gateway Interface. That was close. Controller Gateway, Common Gateway. Essentially, it's the interface for web servers to execute a program, which translates to saying, we got a web server here and we want to write some scripts. And the scripts are external to the program itself because we're doing that. So that's kind of what that says pretty much translates to in dumbed down terms that you and me can understand. So let's go make directory and let's go into that directory. And here we can see there's nothing in here. So we're going to create a file called script.sh. SH, that's a bash script or a shell script, I guess. So we'll do bin bash. And now going back to what we talked about earlier, if we were on an Android phone or if we were on some weird kind of router or on some slim operating systems, chances are it might not even have bash installed. And if that was the case, then you would have to specify bin sh for just the shell. But we got bash here, so we're going to take advantage of that. So all I'm going to do is type in echo hello from busybox. And I'm going to go ahead and right quit that. And I'm going to go and run our web server again. This time it's not in the oxymonster, it's one directory inside that in the web server. So if I hit enter, we got a web Web server running refresh and we get hello from busybox but we didn't get the other thing where's the um where's my other line and if i go here and do inspect element let's see if i can see so as we can see that code that we wrote in that script is nowhere to be found so it's not working so we can exit out of our web server and it's not working because busybox web servers they're only reading html so the web server takes a look at the script and it goes well i only read html content and i don't know what this is but it's not html so i'm not going to use it so what we got to do is do echo content type text html and then we got to do echo a blank line for it to just process what it's doing and we could add in another echo. So we could do echo. This is our company website. We can do right quit. And let's launch our web server once more. And let's go over to Firefox and refresh. And it seems like it's not working. Is that because I got a slash at the end right that? So if I do an LSLA just to do some troubleshooting, I can see this is actually not executable. So I think that's my problem here. Let's do a chmod plus executable on this script. So now let's try launching a web server one more time. If I were to hit still nothing, maybe I have to locally just parse this so I can go cgi-bin script1.sh. There you go. That's, that's actually the one I was looking for. So hello from busybox. This is our company website. And you can see this is all written on one line. But if we go back here and run out this command, then it's on two different lines. And actually this is left out because this is a command in HTML. So it doesn't spit it out even though we wrote echo. So it puts in that command that converts our text into HTML. Then we got the blank space that HTML uses to process this command because HTML reads blank spaces. In Python, blank spaces don't matter. 
in HTML, a blank space absolutely does matter. So if we wanted to write out these two in two separate lines, then we would have to do a line break inside of that script. So in order to do a line break, all we gotta do is type in br that, and if we save that, run the web server, refresh, then we can see that it's on two separate lines. But since we're doing it like that, then we don't even need this echo to be on two separate lines, right? Then we could just go copy this, run our web server again, and we got the same result. And we could pretty much just keep going back into the script to add in more options. We could do echo header, then we could do date, close the header off, we could do uname dash a, and we got syntax errors. So I guess I didn't write the, maybe these gotta be somewhere else like that. I'm not totally familiar with HTML. There you go, that's what I was looking for. And we could do a horizontal line to divide these two as well. So we can do, do HR for horizontal and that doesn't work. I don't actually remember where to put this. HR, do I put it? Yeah, there you go. So now we got a big horizontal line to divide these. Looks like I still got some in line nine. Oh, I, I see the error right now. I forgot my double quote right there. And I get the uname, the name of the Linux system. It's Linux case controller, it's Ubuntu. GNU Linux. Here's the architecture of it. One more thing, one last thing here. Whenever you run this command as well, there's another option that you could put to it, which is U, which specifies the username that you want to run it as. And it says operation not permitted because maybe I need to be pseudo for that. But anyways, all you gotta know is dash U, there's other options to run this. You could do busybox httpd, httpd, or maybe it's man httpd, man busybox? Somewhere in here, there's got to be a list of options that you can use with it. Dash F for foreground. Dash V for verbose. There's a capital U. That's not the one we're looking for. Dash H. That's our sim link. It's our target. You know, our full directory path. Here's dash U. Copy only newer files. Okay, so maybe dash U is not user. We're looking for something else. Ah, whatever the case. Um, Take a look through manual just to skim through it, see what all the options are. I know you're not going to memorize it all and don't think that you should memorize it. I don't think you should. Just know it's there. And just know you can sift through it anytime. It's got a lot of cool different options. So that's all I wanted to talk about with BusyBox and maybe I'll make another video for it for some maybe netcat scripts, some port checking scripts that we can use with it on how we can use it to check our infrastructure connectivity. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good day.